Melissa Packwood is a learning specialist and academic advisor at Beacon College in Leesburg, Florida, the nation's first accredited baccalaureate institution dedicated to educating students who learn differently. She's a homeschooling mom and certified teacher with experience in public schools and private practice. Peggy Ployer is a leader and advocate in the special education homeschooling community with two decades of experience as a special needs consultant for the Minnesota Association of Christian Home Educators in the Texas Homeschool Coalition and 19 years of experience homeschooling her own children with diverse learning needs. She founded SPED Homeschool in 2017 and serves as CEO. SPED empowers families worldwide to successfully home educate children with diverse learning needs. She also also is the primary host of Empowering Homeschool Conversations, a live broadcast and podcast that addresses relevant issues related to homeschooling diverse learners. Dr. Rochelle Matthew Somerville is an educator with more than 25 years of clinical experience in early childhood and special education. She has served as a university professor, countywide autism specialist, educational consultant, and K-12 resource teacher. In 2010, she co-founded EFM Educational Consultants, which supports homeschooling families, particularly those with children with disabilities. She currently serves the Homeschool Legal Defense Association as an educational resource specialist. And we're going to begin our conversation with Melissa. Melissa, how can homeschooling cater to the diverse learning needs of neurodivergent children? Well, homeschooling provides a lot of opportunity for one-on-one -on -one help. It also provides time for uh, support from a speech-language pathologist, occupational therapist, et cetera, for mood regulation challenges or um, challenges meeting sensory needs that perhaps are not met in other schooling settings. And of course, we have that opportunity for additional assistive technology help when we have that one-on-one -on -one, uh, assistance from professionals. All right. So Peggy, how can a homeschooling environment provide a less distracting environment for these children and allow them to be able to better focus on the schooling? Well, homeschooling is completely customizable and it's amazing just how much you can take what distracts your child out of a room very quickly without having to put in a custodial order or have it written in an IEP. You just make that decision and you remove it immediately. And so children and parents can customize any learning environment. Kids can learn on the floor. They can learn upside down um, if that's the way they learn best. And so the environment can change from inside to outside almost immediately. And that makes it just um, perfect, especially when kids are changing um, throughout the day on what they need in order to learn in a space. Thank you. So Dr. Matthew Somerville, how can homeschooling allow a child to uh, benefit social emotionally um, as opposed to traditional uh, education in public and private schools? Homeschooling actually can offer a lot of several uh, great benefits for children, uh, specifically in, so in social emotional well-being uh, compared to the traditional public school. Um, personal learning environments, specifically, um, they get individualized attention, greater flexibility. Uh, the, the bonds that, that children can create at home with their families, spending that quality time um, and, and being able to create that strong sense of identity um, using the family values, uh, opportunities uh, for personal growth and being able to uh, fulfill whatever their passions are because of that individualization. And so that social emotional part of the child is, ba is basically be being able to be developed uh, in that home school uh, environment uh, in lots and lots of ways because they're able to take that real world um, interaction and, and translate it into something that's really, really meaningful. All right. So, Melissa, can you talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges that parents who aren't educators might face in providing qualified instruction for children with learning disabilities? So uh, a lot of parents begin feeling stressed and worried and trying to replicate what happens in a public or private school. But the truth is you pulled them out or chose not to take that option for reasons that were customizable to your child. So it's really important to remember that you're doing what you feel is best. It's okay to reach out for um, a curriculum help or a tutor, a consultant. But at the same time, you can learn with your kids. You can talk to any therapies or therapists they see to get assistance. And it's also 
also important to give yourself a break. You know, um, it's not easy to educate anybody, yourself or otherwise. Uh, public school teachers need a break too. So give yourself and your child those little breaks through the day, get a salty snack if that's what they're craving and just kind of keep going while you take those breaks and give yourself the grace to kind of adjust as needed. It is okay to change the curriculum if it's not working. It's okay to change a therapist if it's not working, but just think about what meets your child's needs and try not to stress so much because you're doing everything you can and just step by step add things in as you see fit. Okay, so Peggy, one of the concerns that parents who may be considering the homeschooling option are worried about is that neurodivergent children are often insular. So tell me how homeschooling can help them um, enhance their social skills and their peer relationships. Yeah, a lot of times that that when kids pull in in school, the reason is is because they're so anxious about the subjects that they're learning that they struggle in. And so they identify their struggles as who they are in that community. The beauty of homeschooling is that your kids can learn um, in those difficult subjects and through those difficult things on a one-on-one -on -one basis in your home, and then go out and have peer relationships and things that they excel in. And um, so whether it's a sports activity or just a special interest of theirs, theater, um, then the, their learning deficits don't always get as much in the way of those social interactions. So Dr. Matthew Somerville, one of the things we're hearing today a lot in education is about mental health and the deteriorating mental health of students. Can you tell me how homeschooling can help neurodivergent children uh, improve their mental health and well-being? Absolutely. Um, homeschooling can definitely positively impact the mental health and well-being of neurodivergent children in the long run by providing definitely a tailored learning environment that accommodates those unique needs. Um, uh, a lot of children with um, disabilities come with a, a, a gamut of um, very unique individual needs that a lot of times take very specific kind of tailoring in order to reduce a lot of the stress factors of maybe sensory overload that they need accommodating. Um, that homeschooling allows for flexible scheduling. They may be overloaded with schedules that are just too much for them. But when they homeschool, it, it allows for that stress releaser um, that that uh, that allows for them to actually take a break of that mental stress it, which actually works for them the personalization the approach uh, it also helps with their self-esteem it helps with the social skills that a lot of times um it has a direct impact on their mental health too uh, the social opportunities they are controlled to allow for those positive social impacts for the child so overall it does a lot for their social um for their overall social health so Melissa, how can homeschooling help um, a neurodivergent learner develop self-esteem and confidence as a learner? Well, you're able to go at the student's pace. So if they're ahead in math, but struggling with language arts due to a learning challenge, a learning disability, you can provide that explicit sequential instruction. You can give a place for that emotionally safe review where it's not so risky to have a wrong answer. You don't feel embarrassed because your peers are not there watching. Um, and then it gives you the chance to focus on mastery. You know, it's okay if you have, for example, Down syndrome and it takes you many years to learn to read. You can can keep working on it, reviewing in a safe, healthy environment that's going to support you and provide that chance for uh, modeling and explanation and practice. All right. Well, Peggy, in higher education, they're currently flip-flopping over the value of standardized testing as it relates to admitting students. But just in case they decide that they want to do that again permanently, how can homeschool children be adequately assessed uh, for standardized testing? So a lot of times um, states do not require that parents use standardized testing when they homeschool, but if they do, um, the parents are able to help children to learn their strengths and so that they can use them when they're facing things that are going to be testing their, um, their knowledge or ability to use that knowledge. And so um, a lot of times kids, even with neurodivergent learning issues, will um, test on the borderline of a lot of um, learning struggles just because their parents have done such a good job of helping them to know what their strengths are and to accommodate um, just in how they approach learning and testing. 
Okay. Well, Dr. Matthew Somerville, if it indeed takes a village to raise a child, how can homeschooling parents collaborate with therapists um, and other professionals to help support their neurodivergent student who is learning at home? Well, it definitely does take a village to raise a child. And, um, and when you homeschool, you are uniquely positioned to partner with with those service providers. And so that is one of the gifts of homeschooling and that ability to collaborate with your therapist. You know, when um, when you are in the public school system, a lot of times in the therapeutic situation, um, kids are taken out and they are they are um, re they receive therapy kind of in a, in a box kind of system where the parents are on the outside. But when you homeschool, you are uniquely collaborating and partner with those therapists and it's brought in. You have the unique opportunity to maintain a, a regular communication relationship. Um, you can, uh, those therapies then translate to, to con a continuum that happens in the house. Their consistent meetings. It's really a partnership. And so it's really a gift that homeschoolers have with their therapists um, that that is a cohesive support system that doesn't only only happen like in a in a clinical setting, but but it's a continuum of support, and so it really is beneficial for the child in that situation. All right, so Melissa, you're on a college campus. Um, talk to us about how homeschooling prepares students for the rigors of college academics and the social uh, demands that come with college. So home education gives you the opportunity to look and see what your um, child, future college student, hopefully um, is doing well with and what are the challenges. We want to focus uh, very much on executive functioning skills. So we want to talk about, you know, how is the time management? Do we need a visual schedule to help us sort things out and plan out activities and, and assignments? Um, do we know how to do life skills, like what the steps are to wash our laundry or clean a bedroom? Do we need that visual representation like a photograph in advance, which many of our RAs and RDs here do provide for students that first week so that they understand the expectation. So practicing things like that can be very helpful. In addition, other executive functioning skills such as mood regulation, de-escalation strategies that work for that child are super important because not everybody is going to have the same strategies and coping skills to help de-escalate themselves. And of course, we went to work on self-advocacy. It may not be totally um, present when you come to college because the brain is still developing, developing, excuse me. And also sometimes people, um, you know, have a developmental delay. So sometimes that development might be a little bit behind same age peers. That's okay. You can work on it as a home ed parent or tutor. And then as you move towards college and, you know, that future job, it will continue to develop. Um, and of course, we want to be able to break down tasks, take a large assignment perhaps and break it down into chunks or pieces. We also want to know our strategies and resources. We want to be able to communicate effectively. All of that's in that executive functioning um, umbrella. So really function, uh, executive functioning skills can be what you're looking for. Great, thank you. So Peggy, let's uh, role play for a minute. Um, I'm a parent who thinks that homeschooling my neurodivergent son is going to be a silver bullet for his educational progress, but I'm shaking in my boots because I'm not a teacher and I've never done this before. Are there community resources out there to support our educational journey as homeschoolers? Absolutely, and it's grown so much lately. Um, so they're, they're not only our homeschool groups that are local. You can basically go on Facebook and search your city and homeschool and find play dates and um, park times, um, field trips, and even co-ops and support groups for parents that meet locally. Um, there's even more um, organizations that support parents both state and um, nationally. And, and then there's just resources within your community that you don't even think of as being able to support your homeschool. Like if you have zoos or museums or um, historical societies, um, your parks and rec department, um, all of those places have usually educational consultants or people putting education programs together that you can take part in as a homeschooler and sometimes they even have homeschool programs set up for during the day. So there's a whole community out there that is waiting to, to help you, but you just have to put your out there, put your child out there and make some connections. I always call it the homeschool dating game. Um, just, just go out and find your people. 
<laughs> All right, thank you for that. So Dr. Matthew Somerville, let's get down to brass tacks. Is there any research out there that supports the value of homeschooling for children who learn differently? Are there, is there research that suggests that their outcomes are the same or better than their uh, peers who are attending uh, uh, public schools or private schools? They're different. There's definitely um, resources that and research that show that there is benefits to homeschooling. We're still at the very beginning of getting all of that robust research together, but there is some um, research on neurodivergent children, uh, even though it's limited compared to the general population. Uh, but there is some anecdotal studies that are at the early at the early beginnings showing that the, there are positive incomes as it relates to personalized learning, the benefits of personalized learning at home, those learning environments, um, the parental involvement being much more rich in the benefits of homeschooling, flexibility and accommodations at home being a benefit. Um, you know, there's a there's a body of research that Brian Ray has done um, and uh, Dr. Duval. And so the research is building, you know, it's, it's piece by piece. It's a little slower um, because there are less children um, um, that are noted with, with individual, uh, less children with disabilities. Um, we've kind of got our hands on. However, the information is out there um, in adult league, but uh, there is a need for, for us to do some more longitudinal studies, but preliminary studies show that there are definitely benefits to homeschooling. All right. I've got one final question for each of you. And the question is, well, first of all, suggest a recommendation for uh, parents who are considering this option. And the second part of the question is nothing is just 100 percent perfect. So there's going to be some challenges. S tell me about a challenge and give me the solution for overcoming that challenge for homeschooling parents. And we'll start with um, Melissa. So one thing that I ran into when I was consulting, as well as when I left public ed and began home educating was, I thought I had to pick one curriculum, stick with it for all subjects. The truth of it is you may have to piece things together. It may be that a math tutor is better than a curriculum. It may be that two different curricula assist better than one particular curriculum. So don't be afraid to change what you're doing if it's not working. Uh, always refer to your state laws, of course, in case there's any rules about you know notifying your county or state. But in general, you can change things up as you see fit when you see there's an issue instead of sticking with it and maybe having regression or not making progress. Um, so feel free to change what you need to. All right, your turn, Peggy. Um, so a lot of times parents, especially with children with diverse learning needs, find that there's not a community that fits their needs. Um, and so I challenge parents to do what I did, and I created my own community. Um, I created a pod. It was two other families in my family, and we got together every week. We were each other's support system. We hired um, tutors um, for our three families, um, sometimes a gymnastics coach to teach a class to us. Um, but we customized it even more so so then any other group could do that because we knew the needs of our kids and each of us had a child on the spectrum. So that made it a little bit easier for everybody to have understanding of, of how we were going to roll. Um, but, but as far as resources, I just recommend um, our websites, bedhomeschool.com. We've been around since 2017 and we have a podcast. We have group consulting that's just starting this month. Um, so parents can come together with professional consultants and get their questions answered. We have groups on there and just a lot of ways for parents to connect with each other and get the support and resources they need. And Dr. Matthew Somerville, you have the last word. I, I want to encourage families to think about this realistically. Um, and, and just know, I want to normalize that feeling of being nervous um, and not being completely confident with homeschooling. Um, I've homeschooled for 18 years and I still question myself sometimes and re remind people that homeschooling is not a pit stop, it's a journey. Um, and there are going to be good days and there are going to be not so great days. And that feeling needs to be normalized. Um, there are days where I still second guess myself, but I also understand that this is just part of the journey. And so I think we need to normalize a feeling of understanding that it's not all going to be great. You know, it's not Disney. Right. And so I think it's OK to, to second guess yourself and know that that's still that's still part of the journey. And so I encourage all families to um as, as Peggy said, find your village, 
because this is the way that we homeschool successfully and we find our community and we village it out. But understand that um, second guessing and not knowing for sure that you that you are definitely on the right path is part of that journey and it's okay. All right, we'll have to leave this important conversation right there. Melissa Packwood, Peggy Ployer, and Dr. Rochelle Matthew Somerville. Thanks for the knowledge. Thank you.